incredible, right? Given all the glory to God and all that he's done for us. You know, it says in Romans 8, it says, do not consider that our current sufferings, do not compare them to the blessings and the grace that is going to become inside of each and every one of you. That song perfectly speaks. Do not let our current situation stop us from taking that step to doing what we need to do to get to God's glory. As we are daughters of the King, amen? Amen. 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 I'm going to pray for us. God, we just thank you. We thank you that you're in this place. We thank you, God, that you are pouring down on each and every one of us right now, Father God. We thank you that we are discovering in this moment a new peace, a new joy that we've never known before. Because that joy and that peace is you. We thank you that our hearts are open. We thank you that our ears and our minds are open to hear your words, Father God. Use us in this place to speak who you are. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen? Amen. Are you ladies ready to hear the word? You ready? Well, it is my pleasure and honor that you guys get to hear from one of my heroes, one of my favorite people on this planet. And that is my father, Mike Barber. Give him a big hand. You better say that. You hear that? He just said, I better say that. Where's my allowance after this? How about that? Uh huh. Give me just a second here. Hey, they go well. <laughs> well. Here we go. Amen. Did you enjoy that music? Where's, uh, come here, Chris. Come here, Chris. My son will be here tomorrow. And this is his, uh, helpmate. What is your title at Elevate? His best friend. That's what I am. His best friend, of course. His, Chris is his executive there at the church, Elevate. Tell them real quick about Elevate and those that are getting out of Houston where they can come and have a church. Hey, first and foremost, I want to say I'm honored to be here. This is actually my first time being on stage. He let me, (laughs) if he gives me the mic, I'm probably going to go 20 minutes. Is that okay? 20 minutes? I'm joking. But we are an inner city church. Inner City Church in uh, East Downtown Houston, and anybody from Houston? Oh, wow. Any of y'all Rockets fans, Texans fans? How about Cowboy fans? Yeah! 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 (laughs) Anyways, anyways. Hey, we would love East Downtown Houston, Texas. We are Inner City Church. And let me tell you, we are a diverse church. It doesn't matter who you are, your skin color, your financial status. We want you there. We are bridging the gap between CEO and inner city, homeless, those that that don't know God, those that do know God. We want you there. And Pastor Brandon and his wife Kristen are such amazing people, and they take after this amazing man. And uh, we would love to host you. We love, uh, whenever you get out, come check us out. Elevate people. That's what we're called. He needs deliverance. (laughs) Cowboys, are you kidding? Y'all know the difference between the Dallas Cowboys and a dollar bill? You can get four quarters out of a dollar bill. (laughs) 
Ah, oh, that's good. That's good. Y'all meet my beautiful wife. Stand up, Shaheen. This is my wife. God bless all of her. Amen and amen and amen. What did I do here? Here we go. Let's make this happen tonight. Ladies, you're, you're going to have a great weekend and keep coming out and we'll bless you throughout the weekend in more ways than one. And I want you to know that your uh, new warden here, we go way back, Warden Franks. And I, I, don't, I don't know if I have a warden that supports this ministry any more than her. And, and then you've got a chaplain. She, she's got a, her, her, her meditate, her medicine is the gospel. And. Love her, and she also supports us, and we support her, and thank God for her. And Chaplain, it's an honor to serve you this whole weekend, and uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. One more thank you for them and all the staff that makes this happen. Amen? Amen. Mike Barber Ministries, we're about to conclude our 32nd year of full time. 32nd year, we're about to walk into... Our 33rd year, and some of you that's been around here for quite some time, y'all have seen my little daughter over there since she was just a little bitty thing, and she done grown up now and got married on me, and yep, that's all I'll say about that. <laughs> no, her, her husband is like my own son, love him to death, and uh he wouldn't do it, you know, nothing he wouldn't do for me, nothing I wouldn't do for him. So we do absolutely nothing for each other. <laughs> Ladies, I'm telling you, you've got some great speakers here for the rest of the weekend. So if you can, be here, okay? If it's any way possible, be here. During the visitation hour on Saturday, if you have visitation, we'll have a board over here. And we'll, we'll write it down and we'll get you the message without interrupting the service. And to make sure you can come out here and in case you get that unexpected visit, you won't miss it. I promise you. We will let you know about it. Okay? So anyhow, put your hands in the air. Come on, you've been there before. You Dallas Cowboy fans, y'all will get that in a minute. Let's say this with me, ladies, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father. In, Jesus name, in Jesus' name, thank you for the worship, thank you for the worship. and now thank you, for the word. thank you for the word. Open up my eyes to see, my, eyes to see. My, ears to my ears to hear, and my heart to receive, heart to receive. All, that all that you have. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name. these next 30 minutes or so minutes are, so. are for me. I forget, I forget who's to my right, to my, right, to my, left, to my left, in front, in front or, behind. or behind. I am focused on the word in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. This, is this is my night, my night. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Let's give this young man here a big thank you. Amen. He plays it just like I taught him. <laughs> Ladies, let's, let's talk about a very, very important word. And, and this word is faith. And I understand this word has been taken, misused, abused. And yet, 
I believe it is so vital for the day that we live in today to really understand the value. See, what you value, you honor. What you value, you protect. What you value, you're faithful to. Amen? Amen. And this word faith, we must understand how powerful that it is. And is it possible to really have faith in God? I think that it is. Amen? Amen? The ultimate goal, or let me just say this, having faith in God, the ultimate goal for you and I is in 1 Timothy, just listen, Verse 4, and I'll read from the New, uh, New uh, Living Translation. I just love it. So you King James people, you'll just have to forgive me and get over it. All right? I'm too much of a country boy and all these these and thou's and begot this and begot that and what it did, what it did. I don't know where it came from. I don't know. But it's about communication. Amen? And understanding. But 1 Timothy 4, chapter, uh, chapter 4, verse 12, the second half, it says this. Be an example to all in what you say, in the way you live, in your love, and in your faith. Everybody say, in your faith. That's the ultimate goal, should be for every one of us in what we say. What do we say? What comes out of our mouth? What comes out of my mouth when nobody's around? It's one thing for me to stand on this platform and have words of encouragement, spiritual enrichment. That's one thing. But when I'm all by myself, that's the real character of the person. You understand? Amen? Now, I'm not saying become all holier than thou. Now, those kind of people make me sick. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Bless God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. How you doing today, sir? Oh, I am so blessed. Hallelujah. Bless God. That dude's got more trouble than he can shake his stick at. We live in a real world and real stuff happens. Come on now. Amen? So I'm not trying to present an individual that's just so holy. I'm talking about living in a real world when stuff happens. When your day is going wonderful in this place, and then all of a sudden you turn the corner and all hell breaks loose. What do I say? What comes out of my mouth? Sometimes we don't succeed. And the person that don't admit that, I don't want to hear nothing they got to say. So our example, though, in Jesus' name, by faith, okay, by faith, we also, we guard what we say and in the way that we live. You can't have genuine faith if you're not living according to the Scripture. It's what's wrong with our leadership today in America. Everybody wants to live life the way they want to. You've been given a permit to live any way you want to, talk any way you want to, believe any way you want to, and everything is okay. I got news for you. That ain't the way it is. Not in the real world. So the way you live, the way you love, you love unconditionally with God's love. You don't get, you don't get love out of order. 
True love from God doesn't become a fleshly love. True love from God is a love that you value. You value who you are. You value how God created you. And then you live that way out. Because you see, ladies, there's not but one thing that every one of us should do. And that is, and everything that we do and what we say, the way that we live, the way we love and our faith is to glorify Him. We should bring Him glory through us. The Bible says in Corinthians that we've been bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in our body. Why did He say in our body? Because that's the only thing that can come out. You've been bought with a price. What? The blood of Jesus. He died on the cross for you. And it's only by faith that you can receive this healing. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. So how big is faith? According to Hebrews 11.6, and many of you know it. If you've been in church at all, you know this scripture. Jesus is saying here that without faith. See, y'all been to church. Y'all telling on yourself right now. What y'all doing here? You knew. You knew. But the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please him. So let me ask you, is your faith genuine or is it counterfeit? Genuine faith glorifies him. Counterfeit glorifies the flesh. I'm going to do my thing. I'm going to take the scripture. I'm going to work it out, reword it to fit my lifestyle the way I want to live it. And you'll never, ever, ever, regardless of what anybody tells you, you'll never, ever be able to receive the promises of God Doing faith the counterfeit way instead of the godly way. Is it possible in Mark eleven twenty two the Bible says, I tell you the truth, I say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen, but you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. Well, the mountain here is not talking about a piece of dirt. This mountain is whatever it is that's got you bound and held up. See, you can come to church all you want to, but that don't mean you're okay. You can go to church every time the doors are open. You can play instruments. You can have beautiful voices. You can do all of that. You can you can be president and founder of a worldwide prison ministry. That means nothing. So whatever that is, that mountain that's in your life that's got you bound. Lazarus was dead for four days. That sucker stunk. He stunk, ladies. And Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. But what happened after that? He's now alive. He's breathing. Lazarus is in here. Jesus had to say, loose him and let him go. He was alive, but he was bound with the wrappings. He said, without genuine faith, you will be bound with the wrappings of the world. And you can be going through the motions, but you're still bound because you've not given it up to the genuine faith that I'm trying to talk to you about now. I told my Lord and my Savior, I got delivered from pro football 32 years ago. 
I had to be delivered because I loved it. I couldn't retire. I had, God had to do a miracle, and he delivered me from pro football. And I told him at the very beginning of this ministry, God, if this is where you've called me, it's where I'm going to live. And this is just, just the way I said it. I will not use the church like a, uh, as a prostitute. That's what came out of my mouth. God, I'm not going to go from church to church to church to church knowing that the real reason why I'm going is I need an offering. Now, everybody thinks that I got it made because I played pro football and I've been on TV a lot. Hey, listen, I played football when they didn't pay. My first, I'm the first draft choice in 1976, and my first year salary was 35000 Today, that would have been $35 million. I could slap my mother for having me 10 years early. You understand? And I've been on Christian TV for a lot of years, but what they do when they give you a program, they stick you in the, in the hours that nobody's watching just to fill time. And so it's, it's given me a little recognition maybe, but it hasn't turned out green for me. And that's the honest truth. But I said this from the, begin, from the beginning, ladies, by faith. I said, Lord, if this is what you call me, I will not give up my biggest day in prison, which is Saturday, to go travel to some prison, believing for a great check from that church. I said, God, that's not faith. I'm going to stay in my lane, I'm going to run my race, and I'm going to trust you. And ladies, I can honestly say I've been doing that since day one. Well, Mike Barber, you need to do a book. You can make a lot of money. I had not got over that hurdle yet. I can't figure out why somebody would want to read a book that I would write. If God tells me to write a book, I'll do it. It won't be with hidden agenda behind it. I'm not going to do it. So I said, God, okay, if you're going to do it, I just feel like we're going to have big crowds. So I said, God, I need chairs. My folks ain't going to sit. My congregation not going to sit on the cement floor like it did another ministry that I served for six years. I said, I ain't going to do it. God blessed me with over 2,000 chairs. I got a lot of chairs. I said, Lord, because of big crowds, I got to have a platform. I got to make sure that the people in the back can see me just as good as I can is on the front row. I got a lot of staging. Puts me up high. And I said, Lord, now these guys, they going to they gonna love music, especially the music we're going to bring in. And so I said, Lord, I, I, I need a sound system. I'm not going to have a throw-me-down sound system secondhand. I need a sound system that you don't hear it, but you feel it. I need a sound system that will make a white honky dance good. You know what I'm saying? And didn't you enjoy that? And you know what, folks? Everything that you see here is debt-free. We don't owe a penny to nobody. And yet at the same time, at the same time, literally every single month of this ministry, every month, at the end of every month, there's more month than there is money. And I honestly don't know how we do it. My calendar is completely booked for 2019 already. And, and, and listen to me, and listen to me. And the only way that I know to do it is this one word, faith. This is very expensive. The state doesn't help me in any way. And the way that I do it, this entire weekend, will go in, on my American Express card that's in my truck. And then I'll have 30 to 40 days by faith to believe God will speak to people to give. That's exactly the way Mike Barber Ministries operates. Now you tell me, all my wonderful sisters in here, the worship that we've had, you tell me, you, don't, you think God's not going to do it? Oh, he's going to do it. He's going to take care of it. 
And so, ladies, all that being said, I want you to take a deep breath now, and I want you to grab a hold of this faith because it would change your life. When you grab a hold of faith, it helps you find your true identity. When you find your true identity, you're not afraid to walk by yourself. I'm not going to act like that no more. I'm not going to live my life like that no more. I'm not going to talk like that no more. And so you want to do that, you do it, but I'm out of here. I'm not going to live like that no more. I'm not going to love like that no more. Why? I found my true identity because I've grabbed a hold of this word faith. To God be the glory. Let me go through some scriptures with you. In the King James Version, I'm pretty sure of this, the word faith only shows twice. That's it. But you see, when we went into the New Testament, the New Covenant, literally the word, is, the word that's used in Hebrews is the Old Covenant, the Old Testament is obsolete. We all understand what that word means. It doesn't exist anymore. Because Jesus went to the cross to die on the sins for you on the cross for our sins for you and me. Now in the New Testament, the New Covenant, basically starting Matthew, but all the way through it, the word faith shows up at least 265 times. It's redundant. It's over and over and over. By faith. By faith. By faith, by faith. It's not just a word that, oh, okay, I, I believe by faith. See, it does no good if you just talk it if you don't live it. It does no good for me to say what I just said to you, but then I go and I sneak around and I go over here and to do this speaking engagement and that speaking engagement and get some nice money, and I can do that, and I can make a lot of money. But I'm not going to do that because... I have faith in my Lord and Savior. He's my provider. Amen. Romans says this. Romans 1.8 says this as I bring this to a close. Let me say first that I thank my God. Now this is Saul, Paul speaking. Paul wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Y'all ain't listening to me like I know you should be. Come on now. I want y'all to listen to what I'm saying because I'm giving you the truth. I want you to set tall and I want you to listen hard because I'm giving you your freedom. Your freedom is not a key. Your freedom is in Jesus Christ. Prison is not in you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Give me just a few more minutes. Give me just a few more minutes. So I want you to understand that. Let me say this. So Saul became Paul. He wrote two-thirds of the New Testament. Are you with me? Yeah. Ma'am, you need uh, to find somebody real quick. Who? L win. <laughs> I did. I knew that. <laughs> hey, come on now. Right at the pivotal time. Isn't it just like the devil to try to interrupt? Come on, ladies, this is important. Let me say first, come on, everybody's eyes here, right here. Sorry what you got to look at, but get over it and just listen. Let me say this. This is Saul who became Paul. 
Look for yourself and ask. Now I got still 40% of you, your eyes are looking way over there. They just getting up and walking. Wait, what's there to look at? Right, right here. Right here. Listen to me. In the ninth chapter of Acts, let me just go there real quick and just read it to you. I, I, I don't know, this group here, I don't think believe in hardly anything I'm saying. Now, listen, this is in red, so it's got to be Jesus speaking, okay? Jesus said in the 15th verse of Acts chapter 9, now number one, is Jesus the same yesterday, today, and forever? Yes. He says, I'm the Lord God, and I change not. Amen? And Jesus says to Saul, who is a murderer of all ages, all mankind, zero respect for the things of God, and yet the exact words from Jesus. But the Lord said, go, for Saul is a chosen instrument of mine. He's telling the people around him to get out of the way. And he's saying that Saul is a chosen instrument of mine. In other words, Jesus said, I'm fixing to use this boy for my glory. So you see, guys, we serve a God that by faith he forgives and he forgets as though it never happened. TDC, don't do that. But God has a delete button. And so here we are now. In Romans chapter 1, now it's Paul. He said, let me say first that I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith in him is being talked about all over the world. So number one, true faith communicates. What do you communicate? Hey, sister, what it did, what it did, what it be like. <laughs> no, I'm trying to say, no, I don't have a clue what you're trying to say. <laughs> women, women. I saw a few walk in here. They got their pants so low I could have seen the top of their socks. What's up with that? I just don't get that. But I can tell you this. It's not communicating what he's talking about here. And the fact is, you know that. Verse 12 says this. When we get together, I want to encourage you in your faith, but I also want you to be encouraged. I want to be encouraged by yours. So you see, true faith is contagious. I can be around you, and I pray that my life, what I say, what I live, my love, my faith will encourage you. It will build you up no matter what happens to you. It will build you up. And there will be a time when that person that you're building up, there will be something in your life that the ver revolt is re reversed the roads reverse, and they encourage you. That is genuine faith. you got to ask yourself the question, is that your faith? Is that your faith? Are you just coming in here and you're doing your thing? Most of you ladies in here, you're acting in a way that you never acted that way on the outside. And it's because of choice. But see, genuine faith will help you make that right choice day after day. And you know what? It's really easy. In everything that you do, in every walk that you, that you do, all you got to do is ask yourself one question. God, is it a good ideal or a God ideal? The difference between a good ideal and a God ideal is one too many O's. 
A good idea will bankrupt you. A good idea will keep you so busy you don't have the time for God. A good idea, you'll say yes to every offer and it'll get you off track to what God's called you to do. But when you say, God, help me, is this a good idea or a God idea? He will tell you immediately the right answer. And only by faith will you be willing to receive this proper answer. Verse 17 says this, this good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. By faith. I started 32 years ago full time. Now I've made mistakes, but I've done, a, I think, a pretty good job not getting caught up in what they call ministry. I've been on TV with all these who's who people, got these garage of people around them and you're not, you're not supposed to speak to them or, you know, their anointing, quote unquote, is fragile. What? <laughs> hey, you ain't got nothing on me. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See, true faith gives you your true identity. Nobody's got nothing on you. If you'll grab this faith, you can speak to that mountain. Be gone, and it'll be gone if you believe it without doubting. I spoke from a little kid from White Oak, Texas, population 1,200. We were so far out in the woods, I was 14 years old before I realized my name wasn't Get Wood. <laughs> Both city limit signs were on the same post. A pretty girl in town was a visitor. But yet as a little kid, I started speaking. I, I love football. And I gave my grandson, my wife and I gave our, our grandson, the, my son's son, uh, that'll be four years old next week, we'll be going doing prisons. And so I gave him his very first football uniform. And I couldn't wait for him to open it up. And Poppy, put this thing on. I mean, he put it on. I got a picture of it. And I mean, I'm strutting like, yeah, baby. <laughs> Hey, from start to finish, Romans chapter 3 says this. Guys, I'm, I'm very shortly done. If you'll hang with me, they'll get all this counting corrected and everything. Give them a good hand. They're doing their best. Now let me bring this to a close there. As they're walking up, they're listening. I won't say who it is. You'll probably guess. But all here a few months ago, somebody very, very, very popular worldwide passed away. I noticed on national TV, the person that passed, their kids, family members, loved ones, just real soft. Uh, this is what they'd say, every one of them, every time. Well, they had great faith in the higher power or the main one above. Makes me sick at my stomach. Because the Bible says, if you're not willing to confess me before men, I will not confess you. He's not a higher power. His name is Jesus. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Romans 3.22 says this again. I know it may be sounding redundant, but it needs to be. 
We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. There's no other way. Denomination will not get you to heaven. Religion will not get you to heaven. It is believing by faith that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Amen and amen. I'm going to stop here. Very obvious the devil didn't want me here tonight. All the, and the you got to understand, they, got, they have a job to do. And they're just doing their job. This place here, this unit here, these officers, they have never, to my knowledge, disrespected this ministry, ever. And I appreciate every one of them. But listen, ladies, it's your choice. You can live life any way you want to. God's a gentleman. The Bible says he died on the cross. Why did he? He saw the joy that was set before him, the Scripture says. My joy, it's not my wife, it's not my kids, our grandkids. I mean, yeah, can't say enough about my love for them. But my true joy is that I know 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 that my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And you see, ladies, the way you live, what you say, how you live, how you love, your faith matters everything. Well, you know, this prison ministry, it's just too tough. I've been, I've been having offers all these years to get back into coaching. I could go to the NFL and coach. I go to the college level real, real quick and coach. I know my game. I studied it hard. And, you know, so, you know, I'm tired of this. I'm tired of begging and pleading and, you know, a lot of time not being able to take my wife out to a nice dinner or maybe a nice trip because we don't have the money. Everybody thinks I got all this money and I'm just – Ask my wife. <laughs> no. But yet, at the same time, I'm rich because of my joy in him. And we have chose not to allow the tough times to stop us from doing what God has called us to do. Without faith, it is impossible to please. Now, you just want to take that and put that somewhere in a box somewhere, and yeah, I got faith, I got, but faith not operated, it's nothing but a word. It's just another word. But faith activated, now we got something. I learn how to talk. I learn how to live. I learn how to walk. I learn how to love. I learn how to respect. I learn how to honor. I learn not to contaminate this place no more, but to compliment this place. I'm no more a pain in a butt to these officers. I want you to know, officers, I know. I see you at your best behavior. Y'all just so wonderful. Yeah. Let me do some walking back there when you don't know I'm coming. They know. Because you give them plenty of evidence. But you see that real person that says, Mike, enough's enough. Enough's enough. I'm tired of playing games. I'm tired of pretending that I'm somebody else. 
And I want this faith that brings me joy no matter where my location is. No matter where. Pray this with me out loud. You don't have to, but if you want to. Heavenly Father, with all of my heart, I genuinely, by faith, confess you on this evening. With my heart, I genuinely receive you to be my Lord and my Savior from this point on. In Jesus' name. name. Meditate right there for just a moment. Think about what you're praying. Do you mean it or is it just following what I'm asking you to do? There's a difference between heaven and hell. Just because I put on a helmet and a pair of shoulder pads and jogged out and stood right out in the middle of the football field, that didn't make me a player. I looked like one. But I can tell you it didn't make me a football player. It's when that whistle blew, and I proved that I could play. We can come in here and enjoy the music and get all excited, hear the word, amen, 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 that's right, preach it, that's right, amen. But then you walk right through that door. You don't even get back to your living area. Out comes the same thing out of your mouth. The way you live, no change. So all you did was speak some words. But now those of you by faith that you said it, change will come. And God will be patient with you. When you say something wrong, you'll feel immediately guilt and you'll correct it. That's a guilt that's wonderful. That's not a bad guilt there. Because you immediately say, oh, Lord, thank you. I'm so sorry. It's just like Saul. He's a chosen instrument of mine. And can I stay here as I stop? I truly believe that God has sent this weekend to tell all of you with a willing heart, you're a chosen instrument of God by faith if you're willing to receive. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give God a big hand. I'm going to do something. This second, I'm just speaking to this group right here. I'm going to do something, well, bold, I guess, whatever word you want to use, I don't care. But... Mike, I'm truly meant that prayer. I'm getting out of the stuff I used to say, how I used to say it. I'm getting away of that old lifestyle. I'm going to start going to church. I'm going to find out when the chaplain has programs. Over this weekend, we'll be announcing the different great ministries that come in here. There's an awesome minister. They're sitting right over here on Thursday nights. And all the other wonderful volunteers, I see a couple other volunteers or I did back there over there a little earlier. They're my heroes. Because you see, if you're not willing to go to church when it's church time, you ain't got a chance. You ain't got a chance. Thank you for watching this awesome program. Remember, it was take delayed, and yet it's so special just to watch. I know you were touched. And we're touched because the only way this can happen is through our awesome partners that understand where we go, our congregation, the inmates, can't respond financially. But our partners, they do. They send us even into the least of them. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. And we'll be back with you very soon once again.